Hey everyone, it's Blar, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to read mudflats. So this video will be divided into two parts. First, we'll have a mudflats layout crash course where we're going to cover mudflats generally. You'll see each of the layouts and you'll understand how to go about starting the read method for mudflats. In the second part of the video, we'll have a guided walkthrough where you'll see me go through the layouts in real time so you can see my thought process as I read the zone. Now, before I continue, I want to give a shout out to Carve, whose website poehub.gg uh, was where I first learned the mudflats layouts from. If my guide doesn't work for you for some reason, um, you should go visit his website, which again is poehub.gg. Now, since then, I've also learned some things about mudflats myself and added some reads that have helped me navigate the zone accurately and precisely. So let's start talking about mudflats layouts then. There are eight total layouts in mudflats and there are two starting orientations. We have an up orientation where as you zone in, your character will be facing up and to the right with the entrance to coast to your left and slightly below you. And then there's the down orientation where when you zone in, your character will be facing down and to the right with the entrance to coast above you and to your left, so to the northwest a little bit. Now, the up orientation has three layouts and the exits are as follows. We have the left exit, middle exit, and right exit. So this is roughly how your zone is gonna look most of the time. Obviously this is just an approximation. Now with the down orientation, we have two different sets of layouts. We have right flat layouts and down flat layouts. Um, for the down flat layouts, there are two layouts that sort of make up the down flat set. And for each of these layouts, it'll always be on the eastern or right wall of the zone in the middle here. For the right flats layouts, um, there could be two exits. Again, it'll always be on the right or eastern wall of the zone, but it can either be high on that wall or low on that wall. Now, when we are thinking about how to practice this, here are some tips I wanna talk about first. So the best way to practice mud flats is to make a low level character that has not completed the breaking some eggs class, quest, which means you haven't touched sort of the um, glyph or sigil on the wall right before submerged passage. As long as you haven't done that, you'll still see quest markers for the nest. And that's gonna be incredibly helpful because using those quest markers makes reading the zone way easier than not. Uh, and my sort of mudflats character just has a bunch of early game MS items like Quicksilvers, Wanderlust, Career Reward, that sort of thing to help with the movement speed aspect of getting through the zone. One thing I want to mention and for you to be very careful about is that there are little waterways or springs that go between each of the nests. So you can sort of use these to read where the next nest is, but you need to be incredibly careful because there are waterways that connect to the wall where there's a waterfall and also connect to the shoreline. So using these can be pretty inaccurate. I wanted to mention it for the sake of uh, comprehensiveness in terms of talking about mudflats, but I think you should much rather rely on the read method we're going to talk about here because it'll be more precise and you'll be able to more consistently navigate the zone. Finally, um, if you use this read method, you should not run into Uzbek or the unique robot at all because as of a few patches ago, he's been moved to the perimeter of the zone in all layouts. There used to be a layout where he was sort of in between two nests. It's no longer the case. So, with that sort of general introduction and a couple tips, let's start looking at mudflats. So here is a little more detailed view of the up starting orientation. You can see my character here in this blue box and you can see how as I start, I sort of start facing up and to the right and the coast entrance is below me and to the left. Now, another way we can look at this is there will always be this little entrance rock. We're looking here at 
any of the mudflat layout zones. And with the up starting orientation, this rock will sort of move up into the left. That is the only time it does it. It will not do this in any of the other zones. So when we're thinking about this, this is another way we can read this. So we're going to sort of focus on identifying the up starting orientation by paying attention to what where our character is facing, where the coast entrance is, and what this uh, sort of rock near the entrance is doing. Now let's look at the down starting orientations. So here is how the right flats layouts start. Um, you can see that in the blue box, my character is facing down and to the right. The coast is above me and to my left. And then if we look at the starting rock right here near the entrance, it sort of curves down and forces you to the right. It does open up a little bit uh, upwards, but really uh, one of the key things about identifying uh, the up orientations from the down orientations is the fact that really you can never travel up and left of the entrance in any significant manner um, and instead you're kind of forced down. So now let's talk about the first layout that we're going to go over. We're going to look at the up flats. So the reason why we're doing this is that the up flats are the easiest to sort of identify right away and there's only three of them. So when we're pathing through this, the uh, numbers on the nest refer to the ideal pathing for you to grab them and how to travel. So this up flats middle exit layout, what we're going to notice right away is that we can travel up and to the left uh, from the entrance pretty much immediately. And if we were to draw a straight line directly north from the entrance, what you're going to find is that this first row of nest area is going to be significantly to the left of it. There won't be any overlap with this area at all and this purple line. In the other two up flat layouts, the first nest area will have some overlap with this purple line. And by nest area, I mean this entire thing here. And if I zoom in, you can see that there is some particle effects on the ground here. Um, it's kind of hard to identify these on the minimap, but you'll see in game, like this is like a waterway of some pebbles and things like that, that surround the nest. And this is what I mean by a nest area. So when we go and we see that this nest is significantly to the left of this purple line that we draw straight north from the entrance, we're going to know we're in the middle exit layout. And what we're going to do is we're going to path from this first one to the northeast. And then once we get to the second one, we're going to head directly west until we run into the third nest. Once we get to this third nest here, you're going to travel northeast again and you'll find the exit in sort of in the middle here. Now with our next layout, um, what we're going to see is that essentially there's going to be two variants of this layout and we're going to be able to identify what's going on with the layout um, just sort of based off the first nest here again. So will travel up and left immediately. And what you'll notice here is this purple line intersects with the nest area very slightly. So at the edge of the um, purple line, there are the, is that like particle slash riverway that surrounds the nest. And so the line sort of overlaps with the um, nest area. And so we can roughly say that the entrance and the first nest area are in line with each other. Now, uh, the way we're going to understand that we're in the right exit variant here is that once we get to this first nest, we are going to be able to see on the minimap right away a row of nests directly above us or almost right next to us to the northwest. In this variant, it'll be directly above us. Now, when we look at this uh, next photo here, what you'll see is this is the second variant where once we get to this first nest, it'll be almost directly to the northwest. So, and it, it'll be right there as we're looking at our minimap. 
once we know that it's like this, that we see it directly above us and it's on our minimap, once we're at the center of the first nest or it's late to the northwest, we know that the third nest is going to be to the northeast over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two, we'll go to the third one uh, from the second one traveling northeast or east, depending on whether or not you're in this first variant or the second variant or the first variant. So you can see here, once we get to the second one um, in the first variant, variant where it's directly above you'll travel east in the second variant you'll travel northeast and then from the third um, nest essentially what you'll do is you'll just head straight north and a little bit east and you'll connect uh, pretty easily those are all the up flat layouts now let's talk about the right flats layouts so there's three of these and you'll notice that you're in this right away by the fact that you'll start down and this entrance rock will curve downward and to the right and you won't really be able to travel to the left of the entrance no matter what you try and do. Now, what we're gonna do in a right flats layout is we are going to travel a little bit northeast from the entrance. And once we travel from the northeast, we're gonna know we're in the close stack layout once we see the um, a the first row of nests immediately turn north, and we can also see a second row of nests sort of directly below it to the south. The best way to do the pathing here is to collect the first one and collect the second one. Now, if you can immediately know that you're in the close stack layout, there is an argument that you can go to the second one first. However, the other three layouts won't, aren't going to have a second nest here. So generally speaking, you're better pathing to the north immediately to try and get this first one. As a result, you'll have a more consistent read method for all three zones. So you'll go to this first one, you'll pick up the second one, you'll pick up the third, and then the exit in the zone will always be in the low right. So as, see, as soon as you see this close vertical stack um, that's, you know, near the entrance, you're going to know that the exit is in the low right. And so you'll pick up the first one, head directly south, and then head directly east, and then keep heading east to get to the exit once you've picked up the third nest. In the top stack layout, what will happen is as we travel uh, to the east and slightly north here, once we get to this first nest, we're not going to see anything immediately below us on the minimap, so we know we're not going to be in the close stack layout. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to head directly south. And as we head south, roughly about a screen away from the uh, first row of nests, we're going to see on our minimap the nest three over here. So you'll what will happen is that we have sort of this stack at the top, which is why it's called the, the top stack. And once you see those two and you don't see the second nest, you know you're in the top stack layout. And so from here, you'll go directly south. You'll notice about a screen away from the um, first nest whether or not you can see this over here. If you can't, then you are in the far stack layout. If you can, you're in the top stack layout. And you'll have to travel pretty far south to reach the second nest. You'll travel back up to the third nest, and then you'll head to the low right exit again to reach um, Submerged Passage. So when we think about this layout, um, it's a little annoying because we have to sort of ping pong around to get there, but it's the best way of doing it um, given that you don't know right away if you're going to be in this layout and you would waste a lot of time running to here first, for example, so you don't do the weird V where you have to be backtrack a little bit. So in general, it's better to approach it consistently by traveling east and slightly north in sort of getting to this first nest and then from there reading the rest of the zone. Finally, we have the far stack zone and this is the only right flats zone where the exit is uh, sort of high right. And what we'll notice here when we do this one is that once we get to the first nest, we'll pick it up, we'll immediately head south and about a screen away from this um, first nest, we won't see anything on the mini map to our right where nest three is, um, which will indicate to us that we're not in the top stack layout that we just covered. 
Additionally, another read about this is, is as we travel south, what we'll notice is that the second um, nest is not super far away, and it's to the right of the first nest a little bit, instead of sort of being directly south of it. And as a result of this, the third and final read we can tell for sure is we want to pay attention to how close together nest two and three are. In the far stack layout, these will be pretty close together. If we look back at the top stack layout, nest two and three are pretty far apart. So with all these right flat layouts, which sort of just trying to pay attention to what nest sets are close together. So in the close stack layout, the first and second nest will be sort of in a close vertical stack. In the top stack, what will happen is the first and third nest will be in a close stack with each other, uh, sort of a horizontal stack at the top of the map. And then finally, in the far stack, what you'll notice is that the uh, second and third nest will be sort of in a diagonal alignment each with each other and relatively close. Our last two layouts are down flats one, uh, where sort of the all the nests are end up in a straight line with each other. And then I should mention for all down flats layouts, the exit will always sort of be on the middle right of the map. So if we divide the map in half, the exit will essentially always be uh, at the right sort of middle portion of the map along the wall. Now with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna notice right away that the entrance pushes us down to the right with the entrance rock. But as we try and travel to the east, there will be this blocking wall here. Sometimes there will be an indent in this wall, which is a little annoying because you can't tell right away and it just takes a little while longer to turn south, but you'll have to turn south from here. Once we turn south, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an imaginary line sort of from the corner of the entrance wall, like the entrance formation wall from coast, straight down. And then we are going to run sort of along that line as best we can. So we'll run to the south, a little southeast, and we're gonna pay attention to where we find this first nest. If we find the first nest to the left of sort of this line, um, or maybe right on the line, we're gonna know we're in sort of this line formation uh, down flat where you can just essentially from the first nest, you can travel straight east and collect all of the nests and then straight east to the exit. In the next layout, we have sort of the triangle where what you'll see is that the um, nests make more of a triangle formation like all of the other layouts except for the lined up layout that we just covered. So when we're looking at this, here's that indent that I mentioned with the blocking wall. We're gonna draw that same line from the entrance and as we go down, we're gonna notice a nest a lot sooner in the triangle layout and it'll be to the right of this line. Once we notice this, we're gonna know that we need to find one more nest and to do so, we're gonna travel to the south some more and we'll find the first nest, we'll pick that up, we'll go back up to the second one, pick it up, and then from the second one, we'll head straight east to the third nest, and then from there, we'll head all the way over. So those are all the layouts in Mud Flats. It's a bit complicated on some level, but it's important to practice these layouts in Mud Flats, especially since you're gonna do Mud Flats a ton of times, no matter how you slice it, in terms of trying to learn speed running or even getting faster at just leveling in general through the campaign. Moreover, it's also important because learning mud flat layouts can really help you focus on other important things for speed leveling like XP management, inventory management, and just making consistent solid forward progress. So that's sort of a good reason to take some time to learn these layouts. All right, so now we are going to go to the guided walkthrough portion of the video. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get each of the zones so we can go through and you can see my read method in real time as I do it. So let's begin by getting our first zone. Immediately, I'm going to identify that I'm in a down orientation um, or down starting orientation by the fact that my character is facing down and the entrance to coast is above me. So what I'm gonna do now is pay attention to what this rock does and whether or not I can travel to the east. So I'm gonna start traveling to the east. 
I'm not forced down already to go south, so I know that I'm going to be in a right flats layout. Now, I can see a nest already here. I know from experience that I am in the close stack layout already, as if I were to keep traveling east, I could see this first nest up here, and then directly to the south is the second nest. And then once I get to the second nest, I'll head directly to the east. And from this third nest, I will travel east again to find the low right exit. And you can see that's exactly how that worked out. So that was a very nice sort of first zone because you could almost see right away one way to identify the close stack. Now, sometimes you won't immediately see this as you're coming out. Um, but nonetheless, by the time you sort of get to the point where you can see this first one up to the north of you, you'll be able to see the second one. Let's reset. So I have a, another down starting orientation. I'm gonna see if I can travel to the east. I see right away that there's this blocking wall that stops me from traveling to the east. So I know I am in a down flats. There are two down flats uh, layouts. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and sort of draw a line from this corner here, and I am going to follow that line straight south. I'm gonna pay attention to where the first nest appears relative to that line. So as I do this, you see that it appears to the left or slightly on it. I know that I am in the lined up layout, which means I can essentially just travel in a straight line from nest to nest to nest, and then I will be able to find all three nests roughly in a horizontal line with each other. And from the last nest, I will head to the middle right of the map to find the exit. In other words, essentially, you can just head in a straight easterly line from the first nest when you're in the down flats um, lined up layout. Let's reset and see yet. what we get. Might be faster for me, for me to log out, but I'm just used to doing it this way. So I am in another down starting orientation. I'm gonna head to the east, see what happens with the zone. I see right away that I can keep traveling east and I'm not blocked, which means I am in a right flats layout. So as I keep traveling east, I come to this first nest. I haven't seen a nest immediately below me yet, which means I am likely in the top stack layout or the far stack layout. Now, you can see already that I have seen a second nest here to the right. This means that I am almost assuredly in the top stack layout. And I'm going to double check this by heading south from this first nest. And I will find this second nest relatively kind of far away. And you'll see that if I look on the mini map, mini map the top two nests are in a close horizontal stack with each other. Well, this one is a lot farther away. In the top stack layout, remember, we have to backtrack a little bit because the exit is a low right exit, which means we make a weird sort of V pattern or N pattern, however you want to like look at it, which results in some backtracking, but it's not the worst. For the record, this is my least favorite of all the mudflats layouts because it takes the longest, but that's okay. So let's see what we get. So far, we've gotten all down starting orientation uh, mud flats, which means we haven't seen up flats at all. All right, so uh, I had a bit of an audio issue, so I had to log out and fix it. Um, but we're gonna go back at it. Um, the next zone I've already explored a little bit. Uh, but the reason why I'm gonna show you the explored zone is because this is an interesting variation of a far stack right flats layout that can happen sometimes and it's a good thing to note about sort of procedural generation of layouts now you can see here that i can travel right from the entrance right and i've done so which means i'm in a right flats layout once i get to this first nest i haven't seen a nest immediately below me which means i know i'm not in the close stack moreover usually the close stack is sort of around here with a first nest rather than this far out now, what's really interesting here is that in the far stack layout, this third nest is usually right where this rock is. But for whatever reason, this rock was generated over here, and so this nest had to go down to the east. This happens occasionally, but nonetheless, you can still identify that you're in the far stack because the second and third nest are going to be the closest nests together, right? 
if you look at sort of the distance between these two nests, they're a lot closer rather than the distance with any other nest in this uh, first nest that we see. So as we path it, we will just go collect um, this first nest. We'll travel to the southeast and then we'll head to the northeast from here in a typical scenario. We'll see that there's this third one over here. We'll be like, oh, that's weird. Um, that's just some layout RNG and how it's generated. We'll pick this third one up and then we'll travel to the high right exit and you'll see that we will find the exit here. Pretty cool how that worked out. Um, it's interesting to see. And sometimes when layouts have RNG like this, it's not necessarily that the read method's wrong. It's just that how the layout got generated is very odd. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You can sort of see how I still reason through that it was the far stack, right? And actually, I want to mention one more thing. Um, if we go back to that zone here, when I look at it, um, what you'll notice is once I get to this first one, I can also tell it's not the top stack because as I travel a little south here, if it was the top stack, the second nest I would see is not going to be immediately to my southeast or like to the southeast. Instead, it'll be roughly in a horizontal line, maybe a little bit south, but it'll be predominantly to the east or right rather than down and then to the right. All right, let's uh, queue up another layout. So here we have our first up flats layout, which is excellent. You'll notice that this is an upstarting orientation because our character is facing up and the coast is below us. Now remember with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line from the entrance and we're gonna see where the first nest is relative to that line. As I go up here, I can see that the nest, uh, the first nest is over this way. This line is gonna end roughly around here. You might think, okay, well, isn't that like the middle exit? But what you'll notice is as we go up, the nest area is gonna overlap with sort of like the streams and pebbles still, such that I can say with confidence that this is the um, not gonna be the middle exit. Instead, it'll either be the left exit or the right exit up flats. Now, I know already that this is going to be the right exit because as soon as I got to this first nest, I saw a, another nest that was pretty immediately adjacent and it was on the minimap by the time that I got to this row of nests. When I see that, the nest will either be sort of like right here to the north like it is, or maybe it'll be like directly on top of it this way. There might be a little bit of a gap, but you'll see the second nest as soon as you get to the first nest or the center of the first nest. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go pick up the um, second nest, and then from the second nest, I'm gonna head straight to the east. I'll find the third nest, and from the third nest, I'm gonna head a little northeast to find the exit. And that is how you read I'm the up flats um, right exit layout. All right, back after some technical difficulties uh, second time. So we're gonna try and reset this and hopefully be able to get through the rest of this uh, without having any uh, audio issues. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset and we're gonna see what we're at. So we can see here that we're in a down starting orientation. I'm gonna head to the east. You can see that I'm blocked. So I'm gonna head to the south by drawing a line this way. And this is gonna be a down flat layout. I don't know which yet. <clears throat> so as I travel, I can see right away a relatively high nest and it's to the right of that line that I drew. This leads me to know that this is gonna be the triangle layout, so I need to keep heading south. Now, occasionally, with the triangle versus the lined up layout, one of the things that's gonna happen is that you're not gonna see this first nest. If you don't see a first nest above it and to the right of that line that we draw or drew, you're gonna know, actually, that you're gonna have a weird variation of the lined up layout because what defines the triangle layout is that you'll see this nest to the right f first. And if you travel to the south a little more, you'll see the second nest. But this first nest is relatively high versus in the lined up layout. This sort of first nest will always be like a screen or two more south. So now that we're in this triangle layout, I'm going to go to this first nest. I'm going to go back up to the second nest. So a little bit of backtracking, but that's okay. And then I'm going to pick up the third nest. And then in the down flat layouts, the exit is always going to be in the middle right. So I can just keep heading east from the third nest to find the exit. 
Cool. I'm not up to that just So, yet. so far we have seen um, one up flats layout and a couple down flats layouts. Um, let's see what we get this time. I'm in a down starting orientation. I'm going to head to the right. I'm going to see if I can see anything right away. I see this first nest. This means I am in the close stack because that's the only instance that this will happen in. I'll grab this first nest and this second one and I'll head to the east and I'll be able to pick up the third nest. And from here, I'll head to the low right by keep heading a little east or southeast and I will get to the exit. All right, I have an up flats layout here. I'll head north from the start. You'll notice if I draw this line that this nest is way to the left of it, which lets me know already that this is gonna be the middle exit. No part of this little nest area is in line with the line that we drew from the entrance. So I'll pick this up. I'll head to the second nest by heading northeast. From the second nest, I'll head to the west. Once I get this third nest, I will head slightly to the northeast again, and I will find the middle exit. And there you go. All right, so we haven't seen the left exit mudflats yet uh, for the upflats. Hopefully, we will be able to find that one pretty soon. All right, here I draw this line up. I'm gonna go to this first zone. I know this is in the middle exit, so I know this is either the up flats left exit or the up flats right exit. I don't see a second nest immediately on my mini map once I get to the center, which means this is the up flats left exit. From here, I'll head to the northeast to pick up the second nest. Then from the second nest, I'll head directly to the west. I'll pick this up and then I'll keep heading west to find the left exit. Cool. All right, so that should be all of the mudflats layouts. Obviously, there's a lot going on here, but once we learn how to identify these nest patterns, it can make navigating mudflats much simpler and more reliable. And this is important because anytime you speedrun, you're going to do mudflats a lot. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, this is helpful.